أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا سيد الأنام وصفة الأنبياء الكرام المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله الحجة بن الحسن صلوات الله عليه واللعن على أعدائهم أبد الآبدين ودهر الدافرين We keep insisting to give the chance to visit his master the commander of the faithful for the last time and to hear and learn of him when he entered, he saw how his face is pale and how he's not even able to sit down without a help and how he's weak and tired and exhausted and the poison is running in his blood that you can see what the poison is doing to him. He started to weep and cry, and Imam Ali alayhi salam said, Innaha wallahi al-jannah, ya Allah. Why are you crying? I'm going to my Lord. I'm going to heaven. I'm rejoining the Prophet. The best of Almighty God's creation, and he replied, No, I'm not crying for you, O Ali, for my master. I'm crying for what we will lose. I'm gonna lose you. I cannot imagine being in the world without you. I cannot imagine opening my eyes one day and not have the hope to come and learn and benefit of it. Let's see again and again how Imam Ali alayhi salam teaches us and what he says in the magnificent book that called Nahdul Balada, which is actually the method of living happily in this world and ending our life with Sa'ada and ending up, ending up in heaven. Imam Ali Ali Salam says, Inna man aza'im Allah, the dhikr al-hakim, allati alayha yuthibu wa yu'aqib. One of his most obligations, Almighty God's most obligations, in Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward people for that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish people for that. And even if you struggle in doing other things and avoiding doing these obligations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter how much you struggle, you strive, you put efforts, He will not accept your efforts at all if you don't put these five things in your mind. For these things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased and angry. أَنَّهُ لَا يَنْفَعُ عَبْدًا وَإِنْ أَجْهَدَ نَفْسَهُ وَأَخْلَصَ عَمَلَهَا No matter how sincere he is in his life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't pay attention to his efforts أَنْ يَخْرُجَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ بِخِصْلَةٍ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْخِصَامِ Five things that we have to avoid. The first thing, أَنْ يُشْرَكَ فِي مَفْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ عَبَادَةٍ To associate his desires when he wants to worship Allah. So Allah alayhi salam is talking about worshiping Allah. So the person is accepting Allah. And probably is accepting Allah for the only Lord and only Master. Yet, when he wants to do his deeds, he associates his desires. For instance, showing up 
so-called riya. And I can remember one of my teachers, Ayatollah Sheikh Ali Falsafi, he used to be one of the greatest students of Ayatollah Abu Masjid al Qasim al he used to teach in Mashhad. When he wants to talk about riya, he used to say, when you pray two rak'ah with riya, showing up, just to show people that you are praying, even if you're doing the qunut, you know, you just add a supplication so people will say that, yes, qunut is musta'ab, yes, he is, I don't know, he's good, he's good. He knows too many supplications, he recites too many supplications in his dua. Just to show off, you're gonna not only invalid, invalidate your prey, this is what my teacher used to say, but also in the day of judgment, not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish you because you didn't pray, but he will punish you for the riya as well. So two punishment. This is a problem. So let's assume someone doesn't pray and doesn't do riya. He will be punished. Probably he will end up in hell on the day of judgment. If he knows that prayers are obligation and wajib, but he avoid to pray, he will end up in hell, definitely. However, those who pray and do riya forever their status in hell will be hell. What I mean by that? They have more punishment. Why? Because what they did wasn't for the sake of Allah. It was to just suffice their thirst, to quench their thirst. Yes, I prayed, although you didn't pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you don't feel that you didn't do your obligation, rather you feel that you did, you did it in the best way, and you don't need to repent, so you get arrogant because you're a good person, while you are an evil. So Imam Ali alayhi salam says, if you want to meet with Allah, and eventually we will meet with Allah in the day of judgment, aren't we? Those who think that they will not return to us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish them. So we'll meet with him. Don't meet with Allah with Riya and your deeds. Go to mosque, go to Husayniya, do good deeds. Do it for the sake of Allah because Allah wants you to do it. Otherwise, don't do it. I can remember once a great scholar, a marja, went to visit a uh, a pilgrim who came back from Hajj. When they wanted to knock the door, he told his uh, his friend, "Don't knock the door for a second. Then he told him, "Knock the door." He knocked the door, and then they visited that pilgrim, that person who was in Hajj. When they returned home, his friend told him, "Why you told me just stop from knocking the door for a second?" He said, "Because I wanted to." Purify my intention. What do you mean, purify your intention? He said, I'm a marja. Suddenly I heard a whisper in my ear. Yes, you are marja. How humble you are. You are visiting some normal, anonymous person because he visited Hajj. So you are great. You are very humble. And then he said, I try to purify my intention and to visit him for the sake of Allah because he visited the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to be careful. So this is the first thing. La tushrik bihi fi ibadatik. Do not do riya. And then, aw yushfi ghaydahu bihalak nafs. When you want to quench your thirst, when you get angry by killing an innocent person. If someone kills an innocent person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't look at him in the day of judgment. Okay, I'm not a killer. I'm not a murderer. That's okay, excellent. Sometimes we don't assassin person. Rather, we assassin personality. Okay? Why backbiting is so bad that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not 
will not treat backbiting as normal sins. It's kabira. لا يغتب بعضكم بعضا. Because sometimes when you backbite people, you are assassinating their personality. You are ruining the life. غيبة. What does غيبة mean? So, of course, he's an infallible person. That's why it's called riba. It's not tohma. You're not accusing him. You're saying something that he doesn't want people to know about that. For instance, he doesn't pray his praise in time, but he doesn't, no one knows about it. You say, yes, don't get fooled if this person is not that religious. I've seen him, he doesn't pray his praise on time. This is wrong. Don't kill anyone and don't assassin. Don't assassin a person and don't assassin a personality of person. Beware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't, won't deal with such sins easily. The third thing, somebody else does something and I get proud of his action. Like us, huh? We get proud of Imam Ali. Yes, we have to get proud of Imam Ali as our leader. This is excellent. In other words, we have to try to follow his footsteps. But just getting proud that he is our leader without reflecting his teachings in our life, would that help us? Probably not. Probably not. As Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, إِنَّ الْمُحِبِّ لِمَنْ يُحِبِّ مُطِيعُ That someone who loves someone, he will, he will follow his orders. He will obey him. So if you love Ali ibn Abi Talib, obey him. Be with him. Act like him. Don't fool yourself that because you have Ali ibn Abi Talib, everything is okay. Yes, حب علي حسنة لا تضر مع سيئة. May Almighty God curse those who deny this reality. But the problem is, listen, the problem is, as Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, that sometimes, and I'm actually explaining what Imam Sadiq says, I'm not translating it. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, when a person, a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commits sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will confiscate ruh al-iman of him. Confiscate back the faith of him. When he repent, he will give it back, the faith. So just assume that sometimes somebody commits sins and repents, commits sins and repents, and does that 100,000 times. Till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees that this person doesn't deserve to have the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib in his heart. What's gonna happen? That's it, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take back the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib, take off the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib of his heart, he's done. He won't have the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib in his heart anymore. So don't fool yourself. Yes, حب علي حسن لا تضر معا سيئة. As long as you have this love in your heart. It's excellent. But if you lose the love of Ali, is that possible? Yes, it is possible. It happened to Zubair ibn Awam. The cousin of the Prophet, the cousin of Ali ibn Abi Talib. It happened before, it will happen now, it will happen again and again in the future. So we have to be careful. وَلَا يَسْتَنْجَحْ حَاجَةً إِلَى النَّاسِ بِإِظْهَارِ بِدَعَةٍ فِي دِينَةٍ Trying to be famous by saying new things. Yes. Nobody understands as I do. Nobody knows what I know. Nobody can write book as I do. Nobody can say what I say and you bring something wrong. A bid'ah. Invent something in religion. Invent something. Is that possible? For instance, Salat al-Taraweeh. Yes, an invention. Should we give him a medal for that? No. The Prophet said, Sallu kama raitmuni o salli. Pray as you see me praying. Everyone in Basra when Imam Ali alayhi salam prayed. 
when they prayed behind him, they said, Subhanallah, he reminded us with Salat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. In other words, they were not praying Salat Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi before Imam Ali reaches Basra back then and prayed there as Imam. So don't try to get famous by bringing new things in religion. This is wrong. This is wrong. You have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet, the sunnah of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Even Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam, the greatest successor of Allah, when he reappears, he says, Amdi ala sunnati Rasulillah wa Ali ibn Abi Talib. He will act like the Prophet and like Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon them all. Not going to bring something in you. As they acted, as they prayed, as they fasted, as they did the Hajj ritual, as they ruled, don't bring a new thing. And then the fifth thing, أَوْ يَلْقَ النَّاسِ بِوَجْهَيْنِ أَوْ يَمْشِي فِيهِمْ بِلِسَانَيْنِ Listen, is it hard? Yes, very hard. How hard? Very hard. We are slaves of Allah. At the end of the day, yes, you feel that you are free, but you are not. You've heard this story that Imam Sadiq was passing when he heard, I don't know, Ghina and singing and dancing music from a house. And a woman was standing outside the house. He asked that lady, is he a slave or a free man, the owner of the house? She replied, no, no, he's a free man, he's not a slave. He said, yes, you're right. If he was a slave, he would have acted properly, appropriately. And he went. And apparently that person was one of Imam Sadiq's followers. And when that lady came, she had pale face. So the owner of the house asked her, what's happened? She said, I don't know, an old guy just passed away, he said something, I'm confused, you know? He said it and he meant it. He said, what? She said, he said, is the owner of the house a free man or a slave? And I replied, no, he's, he's, he's a free man. He's not a slave. She, he, and then he said, <laughs> you're right. If he was a slave, he means slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would have acted appropriately and correctly in accordance to Almighty God's laws. And that person, the owner of the house, put his hands on his head and he realized that it was Mom Sadiq alayhi salam. Peace be upon him. So is it hard? Yes, it is very hard. Why it is hard? This is Imam Ali alayhi salam. Aw yalqa nas. Do not do that. Be watch hand. You smile on their faces, but backbite them. Or bilisanain. This is the double standard, okay? Somehow you can say it's double standard. You say good words, put good words in front of them, and then when they go, you just slander them. So what should I do? Should I slander them while they are there? No! This is wrong as well. How should you act? You have to act appropriately, brothers and sisters. You have to be the true slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've heard some people, and we have narrations. We have narrations. They say, no, no, we don't backbite. We say him, say that, and uh, in front of him, we put it on his face. <laughs> this is wrong as well. In some narrations, we have that it's even worse than backbiting. You're, because you, at the end of the day, you are ruining his reputation and, and insulting him at the same time. Meanwhile, this is the problem. So is it easy to end up in heaven? Yes, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you and if you have make the intention. Should you fasten your desires? Sure. Is it hard to fasten your desire? If you go along with that, it's very hard. It's almost impossible. But if you make the intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. And if he does, you will end up in heaven. So look how 
Imam Ali alayhi salam is talking to us, teaching us five things that you have to avoid. Do not meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these five things without any repentance. The first thing, do not associate even your desires. Associate anything even with your desires when you, when you pray to Allah, when you do good deeds. So avoid riya. The second thing, do not assassinate anyone, do not kill anyone, any innocent person. And of course, do not assassinate his personality. The third thing, do not invent a new thing in religion. No. Act as Ahlul Bayt السلام, used to act and do. And the fourth thing, do not get proud of someone else's actions without trying to act like him. Yes, we are proud of Imam Al-Hussein. We are proud of Imam Al-Radha. We are proud of Imam Ali alayhi salam, the commander of the faithful. But we have to try to act like them as well. We can't just be proud of them without trying to be like them and act like them and obey their orders. This is wrong. And the fifth thing, listen how important it is. The fifth thing, that you have to be pure with people, as a pure as pure water. You have to have good intention about people. Husnullah. Good thoughts about people. You're not allowed to slander anyone. You're not allowed to backbite anyone. You're not allowed to be a hypocrite. Iglula siyasa, huh? Yes, he's a politician, man. He knows how to act. When he sees this person, he acts as, as if he loves him. When that person leaves, how he acts? He starts to slander him. Don't be like that. And yalqal insan bi bilisanain. Don't act like that. If you want to be resurrected, with the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him. Oh, our master, Ya Ali, we believed in you without seeing you. You feel your love, we feel your love in our hearts. We know that you are the best examples for all human beings to follow, and we know the meaning of losing you. We haven't seen you, but still we can feel the lost. We haven't listened to you directly, but still when we read your sayings, we can hear your voice going in our minds and how your voice can clean up our bad thoughts and can change human beings to be a real human being. We ask all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to favor us with the tawfiq, to follow the footsteps of the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin.